Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving and I'm super excited today because I finally have my double width double weave blanket on the loom. So uh, to remind you this is all my hand spun yarn that I've uh, spun over the last three years. So we're finally ready to uh, get it on the loom and weave and I thought I would give you a little tour of the warp. So here you can see that the warp takes up almost the entirety of my 53 inch weaving width uh, loom. And I'm glad that I didn't make it any wider because I would get a little nervous, uh, but I have been threading the heddles. And originally I had decided to do a just a straight twill, um, a 2 2 twill, uh, because I can only do four a four shaft pattern and um, because even though I have uh, eight shafts that I'm using um, I need four for the upper layer and four for the lower layer. So if you want to uh, get a refresher on planning a double weave double width project I will put a link to the live feed that I did um, up in the corner you can go back and review that so it's a 2 2 twill angled this way up to this stripe and then I switch and I angle it the other way um, over to this stripe and then I switch back and angle it the other way. So uh, it'll give, and I'll do that also in the um, weft. So there'll be some angles going back and forth. So I'm just going to finish up threading my heddles and then uh, we can tie on, tie up the treadles and start weaving. So because we're threading the um, top layer on shafts one through four and the bottom layer on shafts five through eight, we have to alternate the upper and lower uh, cloth so that we don't have, um, so that we get the right set. So we're going to, um, instead of doing one, two, three, four, like you would normally do, you do, um, So I'm going to do one, seven, two, six, three, oops, right thread, five, and then four, eight. And that's one repeat. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
these extra heddles off because I don't have a whole lot of room and they're going to end up falling off anyways. So I will just bundle them up and um, remove them. Uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to be sure to tie off each leg of the heddles so that um, when I go to put them back on at a future date, they're not uh, all tangled up. So I wanted to point out that on the tie up, uh, you'll notice on my pattern here that it's an eight shaft pattern because there's four shafts that control the upper cloth. And then there's four shafts that control the lower cloth. The upper cloth needs to be raised um, in order to weave the lower cloth. So on the right hand side of the tie up, you have the pattern up here for the 2 2 twill, and it is flopped from the upper uh, cloth because you're weaving it upside down. The lower right hand quadrant of the tie up is tied up such that all of the uh, shafts that control the upper cloth are raised when you're weaving the lower cloth. Again, if you go back to the um, Again, if you go back to the live feed that I did, and I've linked in the in this video, then you can see the explanation of that, and you'll also see it happening when I start weaving. But I did want to point that out. Because I have a countermarch loom, it's not really easy to tie up your lamp or your treadles so that you can push two treadles at the same time. And on previous double weave projects, I have done that, but they were on a jack loom. And the reason that you possibly would do that is because when you're lifting um, six of the eight jacks or six of the eight lambs, it can get uh, very heavy to, to try and lift. So it's easier if you're, especially if you're using a jack loom, to have a treadle tied up that will raise the uh, top layer and then a second treadle that is tied up for the bottom layer um, pattern. Uh, but with a countermarch loom, that usually isn't as much of an issue. Um, this is the first double weave cloth that I'm going to be weaving with a my countermarch. And so we'll see how it turns out. Uh, we'll see how easy it is to lift. If it's not easy to lift and I do need to um, add a treadle, there is a way that I can um, tie up the treadle so that it it can help lift that top layer out of the way but we'll we'll get to that if necessary but it is a it is a um, option so now I'll go ahead and uh, put the reed back in and I will um, slay the reed and we're going to slay this at two ends per dent because in a 10 dent reed, and the reason that we do that is the set is 10 ends per inch, but we're weaving two layers. So it ends up being um, 10, dent, 10 dents per inch for the top layer and 10 dents per inch for the bottom layer. So, it's actually 20 ends per inch. Okay. 
Okay, so I am ready to start lashing on and I uh, went through and I tightened up my warp threads and um, put them in bouts of uh, 10 threads, which is um, about a half an inch. And I will just, I got a uh, spool of a heavy cotton thread that um, I wound onto a bobbin and we'll just put the loop over and did I make, yeah, there we go. Put the loop over that. And then I like to open a plain weave shed and then I can just pass that through and the first couple can be a little bit tricky. All right, so here we have the warp is all uh, lashed on and tensioned. And I had a little bit of a false start because I um, started weaving this and found a, not a threading error, but I found that I had a cross thread that I had not caught. And then when I was fixing that, I realized that there was a thread that had gotten dropped um, down and not threaded through the reed. Um, and then when I was fixing that, I found that I had put two groups of threads um, through the same uh, dent. So that meant, and of course it was right smack dab, dab in the middle. And so to correct all those errors, I ended up having to um, reslay this entire half of the work. So I took the opportunity to go back and check all the threading and check all the denting, and hopefully it is all correct now. Um, and we should be getting ready to weave. One thing that I did want to show you before we started weaving was the system I use for um, watching down the open shed while I'm weaving. Now, because this is double weave and um, it's a very dense uh, weave, so basically this is 20 ends per inch, um, 10 ends per inch for each layer, but um, when you're weaving the bottom layer, you have to raise the top layer and then weave through the shuttle and weave the bottom layer. The problem is, is you can't see the bottom layer. If I raise the top, if I'm weaving the top layer, you can see where um, your shuttle is going and if there are any threads that are maybe catching down below um, and not open up, then uh, you can see that. With When you weave the bottom layer, um, if you, you're raising all four threads on the top layer plus two threads from the bottom layer and you you can't see I mean I have to open it up to see what's going on in there so you have to kind of be able to look down the um, open shed from the side 
And so what I do is I use a endoscope that I stole from my husband. And this is a little camera that projects to my laptop. And um, let's go back down here. And I've got it mounted in a little block here at the end of my reed. Um, so this light right here is where the camera is and it's mounted to my reed and it can look down the reed at where my shed will open. Um, so when I open my shed, I can look at my laptop and it normally will sit to the side um, of my weaving, um, not on top of my loom where it's gonna, but you can see that when I open my shed, um, you can see where I have some threads that are hanging up. So right here, you can see those threads hanging up. Um, but if I, and I can clear those threads and I can see um, all the way down the, uh, the open shed and see that I can Go ahead and throw my shuttle and not pick up any um, threads that shouldn't be i'm going over all the threads that i should and not picking up any that are hanging down from the top um, so i just wanted to show you that uh, and again it's pretty critical to have this type of a um, a system when you're weaving double weave um, and even if you're weaving regular cloth, uh, sometimes I've used this um, because I can't readily see if my shed is clear. And especially with the wool yarn, it's very sticky and uh, will stick together. So we'll go ahead and put this off to the side and then um, I'll mount you at the other end and you can see the process of weaving. Okay, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, to put my header in to, I don't really need to um, spread the wart much because it's, it's very uh, dense already, but I'm just going to put in um, one set of uh, picks to just kind of even things out a little bit. So this is going to be a bit of a stretch, as you can see. Since I am using uh, 50 inches of the 50 I think this is a 53 inch weaving width, 54 inches. So, um, so the way that you weave double weave is you weave the top, bottom, bottom, top. So uh, treadle one is the top, then I'm going to treadle, treadle five, which is the equivalent of one on the top. Um, that will be treadle five. And, and I've got a floating salvage over here on that side and I've got my um, selvage over here with the fishing line. Okay. And then the 
coming back on the bottom. So I'm going to go over my selvage there. I can see in my video that it's clear. So that is two picks. Now we will do the next set, which is um, just three. Go over. And this little shuttle is not very heavy. So kind of hard to get it to screw across there. Okay, there's three, and then seven, which is the bottom. So that's the equivalent of three. It's almost easiest if I stand up to do this. Then over and go under there. Under there. And I want to make sure I don't pull that too tight. And then eight, which is the equivalent of four on the bottom. And make sure I get the right floating solvent. Ooh, I almost made it all the way across that time. And then four on the top. And that is perfect for um, a header row.
So you can see that I have been doing some weaving. I've got about 14 uh, inches woven so far, and I like the way it's coming together. You can see the change in the uh, twill direction uh, on either side of this stripe, and then this stripe has a change also. Um, so in this little square right here, uh, all the twills come together and change, and I just think it provides some movement to the blanket uh, without being too busy. So uh, I wanted to show you the magic of the double weave, though. So here we've got our open salvage, and on this side we have the uh, folded salvage. So um, this is where we put our fishing line in there to help hold that from uh, collapsing and normal cloth will collapse uh, along the selvage and be more dense there typically and uh, we compensated for that on that fold by increasing the denting in the last couple dents of uh, the last three dents here and then putting the uh, heavy fishing line in there. So that helps keep this fold line from collapsing. Uh, so I wanted to put you down level with the uh, open end though, and then uh, treadle the top layer up so that you can see what the two layers of cloth look like. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and push on the treadles uh, so that you can see the uh, layers separate. And hopefully you can see um, down through the layers. And um, probably in the video it's hard to see all the way to the end um, down here at the fold. But you can see I have two distinct layers that are uh, not stitched together anywhere. And um, yeah, so that's the whole blanket. So I think I'm going to go ahead and finish weaving this off camera. And once I get ready to finish it up and cut it off the loom, I'll post a uh, new video with that process and you can see the magic of taking a double weave project off the loom and opening it up. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. If you have questions or comments, please do leave them down in the comment section below. Thanks and happy weaving!